This is the new Peugeot E2008. It has a bigger battery, more power, new tech, but what's it like? In this review, we're finding out. But first, this video is supported by Podpoint, winner of our best home EV charger test 2023. Look in our description below to find out more. So the 2008 first appeared back in 2013 and like lots of other cars it's been on a familiar journey of starting life more as an MPV before morphing into an SUV for its second generation model which we saw in 2019. That second generation model also spawned the fully electric E2008 and the platform it was built on is also found under other electric SUVs like the Jeep Avenger and Vauxhall Mocha Electric. This is still the second generation E2008, but it's just had a facelift. Changes include some tweaks to the styling. So you can see at the front, you now have a larger grille with this big Peugeot badge in the middle of it. And also on entry level active trim, this has a gloss black finish, but on Allure and above, you get this body colored finish on the grille instead. The bumper is slightly different from before, mainly to help incorporate this three claw Peugeot light signature, which we've seen on some other Peugeot products, but now appears on the E2008 for the first time. And on the bottom two trim levels, you get eco LED headlights, and on range topping GT, you get full LEDs. The design of the rear lights has changed a little bit as well, and you now have the Peugeot name written across the length of the boot lid here, whereas on the old car, you had the Lion on the back as well. One final change at the back, the reversing camera has been more neatly integrated into the back so that it doesn't stick out as much as it did on the old car. The badges that you see at the front, the side and the rear of the car are now in a new typeface and a new grey colour for Peugeot as well. And you can have this car in two new paint finishes. There's a new grey and a new white. And the other thing that's new are the alloys. So on entry level active, you only get steel wheels actually with some trim stuck over the top of it. But if you go for Allure or GT, then you get this new alloy design. And actually if you go for GT, then you have the option of choosing these alloys instead. There are changes inside as well. Now on the previous car, the range topping trim got a 10 inch touchscreen infotainment system and the lower trim levels had a smaller screen. But now this 10 inch touchscreen infotainment system is standard across the lineup and the software has been updated. So it's a bit snappier in its response times. You can also have a better level of customization in terms of the menu layouts as well, which is good, but it does depend on which trim level you go for. So if you go for entry level active trim, you do get a 10 inch screen, but you have standard definition graphics and the level of customization that you have isn't quite the same as Allure and GT, which as well as being able to change the menu layouts and things like that, they also get high definition graphics, which are different from the entry level trim. We haven't actually seen, so all we can judge are these high def graphics. And to be honest, this is really nice. It's got a crisp look to things. It's a responsive touchscreen as well. It's still not perfect. And yes, they have worked on the layout of the different menus. It's still a little bit complicated, but it is a step forwards from what you had before. Now, the driver display. On entry level active trim, you have two analog dials and a small digital screen in the middle. If you go for Allure trim, then you get this 10 inch fully digital driver display here. You can customize things like the color and also the order that you're shown bits of information. And if you go for range topping GT trim, then you get a 3D driver display on that trim as well. The other new things in the interior include some fabric and trim on the seats. So if you go for Allure and GT, then you get this new material on the seat bases and the seat back. On GT trim as well, you can have an optional Alcantara upholstery, which gets you heated front seats. It also gets you a massaging seat for the driver, and it's a 500 pound extra, which sounds like reasonable value until you consider that actually GT trim is very expensive in the first place. So really it's a shame that that isn't just included for free. And also if you go for entry level active, then the materials and the fabrics are the same as in the pre facelift car. Other new things though, include the new Peugeot badge on the steering wheel here. And the layout is exactly the same as before. The only difference to point out is the smaller gear selector down here, which is more neatly integrated into this center console. Now these changes really are pretty minor. Yes, the infotainment system's a bit better, but everything else isn't particularly noticeable, which is no bad thing to be honest, because this has always been a nice electric SUV to sit in. You don't necessarily have a high up SUV driving position. This does feel more like a regular hatchback than an out and out SUV. But if that isn't a problem to you, then there's lots of other great things about this interior, like the classy look and layout, 
all these materials feel nice and the build quality is really solid as well. And this is just generally a good interior. There haven't been any changes to the dimensions of the Peugeot E2008. So in terms of rear seat space, what you get here is exactly the same as what you could get before. So that means legroom is actually pretty good, to be honest. While this isn't a big, small electric SUV, it doesn't feel that cramped in the back if you're an adult. And because you've got this kind of boxy styling on the outside, headroom is also pretty good. So this isn't a big, small electric SUV, but it doesn't feel cramped in these rear seats. It is true though that a Kia Nero EV is more spacious when it comes to rear seat space. And also you've got this big lump in the floor back here, which for an electric car is fairly disappointing. But this is still more practical in terms of rear seat space than rivals like the DS3 E-Tents and also the Vauxhall Mocha Electric. At 434 litres, you can fit five carry-on size suitcases into the back of the E2008, which is the same number that you'll be able to get in a Nero EV. This isn't the biggest boot in the class, but it's not tiny either. So overall, this is pretty practical by class standards, especially because you get quite a clever height adjustable boot floor here, which you can see in its highest setting gives you no loading lip at the front and a decent amount of underfloor storage. Plus, because of these helpful things on the side, you can prop this up so you can go hands-free if you do need to load things into the underfloor storage area. There isn't any additional underfloor, underfloor storage area, as you can see, so you can't really fit charging cables in there. And there isn't a front boot either. But overall, this is still a pretty practical boot by class standards. Now, all that practicality stuff is the same with the new car as it was with the old one. But now let's talk about something else new. And this is quite important because the battery is bigger than it was before. So the usable capacity has risen from 46.3 kilowatt hours now to 51 kilowatt hours. That means the WLTP range has risen from 214 miles in the old car now to 250 miles, which isn't the longest electric range out there, but it's still a decent jump compared to the old car. It's not as far though, as you'll be able to travel in a Kia Nero EV or a smart hashtag one. The maximum charging rate has not changed with this new E2008. So at 100 kilowatts, at its fastest speed, you'll get a 10 to 80% top up in 26 minutes. If you want to charge from a seven kilowatt home wall box charger, then to go from naught to 100% will take eight hours and 15 minutes. What's new for the E2008 is the fact that you can get an optional 11 kilowatt three phase onboard charger. The electric motor is different as well. So you still have one driving the front wheels, but in the old car, it produced 134 brake horsepower. Now it produces 154 brake horsepower. However, the difference is the old car could do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 9.3 seconds. Now this new model can do 0 to 62 in 9.1 seconds. So that isn't a particularly big difference. And on the road, you'd be very hard pushed to tell that this new car is more powerful than the old one. But that isn't a problem because the E2008 wasn't a really sluggish and slow car lacking in power. Now it has a little bit more, gets you up to motorway speeds fine, and generally feels quick off the line and sharp in its acceleration. When it comes to slowing down, you have a B mode down here, which increases the level of regenerative braking. So when you lift off the accelerator, the car will slow itself down without you having to touch the brake pedal. It doesn't though have a one pedal driving function like actually lots of other electric rivals do now. That would mean that when you lift off the accelerator, the car could bring itself to a complete stop without you having to touch the brake pedal. But this E2008 won't bring the car to a dead halt. You have to touch the brake pedal for that, which is a shame considering some other rivals get it. But there have been no mechanical changes to the E2008 for this facelift in terms of the steering and the suspension. So it's the same driving experience as the old car. So that means that it is still a comfortable electric SUV. It's got quite a soft setup. It's nicely cushioned. The downside to that is that it does feel a bit wallowy when you go around a corner and it still feels quite top heavy as well. But for a car like this, that compromise is absolutely fine to have that comfortable ride that it offers. The final change to mention is the simplification of the trim lineup. So now there are three trims to choose from. You have entry-level active, mid-spec allure, and range-topping GT. There is a limited run first edition model, which is based on GT, but gets the Alcantara interior and the 11 kilowatt charger. 
as standard. But we think the pick of the lineup is mid-spec Allure because on top of everything you get with active trim, it adds alloy wheels, the updated infotainment system, and some nicer materials inside. Now, price-wise, there has been a slight increase in this facelifted model over the previous car. This definitely is not a bargain. It's also not the most expensive competitor out there, so really, it's priced in line with the other small electric SUVs that it's up against. There is, of course, a petrol-powered 2008 as well and it's had the same changes on the outside and inside as this E2008. There will also be a new hybrid 2008 on the way, which should be available from early 2024. So the new E2008 hasn't had any radical changes, but the few tweaks that it's had here and there has helped keep this as a recommendable small electric SUV, which is nice inside and comfortable on the road. Thanks for watching this review. If you want to see another one, then click there. And if you want to read our review of the E2008 and get a great deal on your next car, go to whatcar.com there.